Well, when you're on a roll, you're on a roll. So another week, another post, two in a row, who'd have thought it? Um, my thought this week has been around something that you learn in early physiology, and that's the Henneman size principle, where smaller motor units are recruited first because for an activity because they're more fatigue resistant, leaving the larger, more forceful motor units fresh to produce more force later on if you need them. Uh, the reason I started thinking about this was in relation to a, a player of mine who has a long injury history, some of it soft tissue injuries, but not, not exclusively. Uh, and yeah, without having done any sort of muscle biopsies or anything like that, observationally, you would say he's very fast twitch dominant. He's, he's powerful, he's explosive, he's fast across the ground, all that sort of stuff. But interestingly, he's also extremely physiologically fit. He'd be one of the fittest players in the group and able to maintain a, high, a really high above average work rate for a long period of time. And when I was reading about Henneman's size principle, as mentioned in a post I saw on Instagram from Stefan Jones relating to fast bowlers in cricket. <clears throat> I wondered about this player and if he is predominantly fast twitch, then say it was a 60-40 split of 60% fast twitch, 40% slow twitch, then in theory, surely as a session goes on, he would fatigue his slow twitch fibers sooner than a normal person or another person. And if that's the case, he would all be already be into his fast twitch fibers and pre-fatiguing them sooner than uh, an opponent or a, a teammate therefore meaning that when he did ramp it up and require a big force output those fibers are working under fatigue more than someone else uh you know maybe this is a blessing and a curse for him it's what makes him unique and and exceptional but possibly i've been wondering is this a clue into his long injury history and and therefore, you know, what can we do about it? At the moment, my thought is, do we need to train him differently? Even though he's playing rugby league and he's a different player, do we need to <clears throat> focus more on central nervous system fatigue rather than physiological cardiovascular fatigue and develop that in him so that we get him to a game rather than him breaking in a training session or something like that because maybe his his slow twitch fibers are more fatigued or faster fatigued than others because he has less of them uh, i think when you're rehabbing or trying to prevent injury in any any player i think this is the level especially with technology the way it is at the moment in sport i think these are the sort of levels we've really got to think of and try and get to if we want to solve any of these sort of problems love to hear people's thoughts hit me up on twitter and instagram luke wilson 21 or have a look at the website and send me an email anything like that thanks